Well, welcome back to the shop. As usual, I'm late to the party on new releases for our company, but let's get into it. So today we have on the bench the Horizon Hobby Habu STS. And those of you who know me and have heard me on podcasts, I am not an EDF or a jet guy. Uh, so this was a surprise to me that they wanted to send this to me. Uh, and I, I appreciate the experience. I, I genuinely do. I'm not afraid to try anything new, of course. Uh, the, it extends beyond my my building capabilities, you know. Um, but I was I was delightfully surprised. My previous experiences with EDFs had been quite limited. Years ago, uh, I bought a Starmex uh, HE something or other Salamander. Terrible experience. Um, <laughs> needless to say, I got two right wings uh, with that kit. Then uh, scratch building my own uh, EDFs, uh, one FT style, one modified FT style, uh, but uh, still not entirely happy with my experience there. So this is my first real ARF experience and I, I will say that I'm quite pleased with it and let me explain to you why. So the first thing that I did when I got this airplane, number one was I changed the battery connector. Um, I changed to an XT60. A couple of reasons for this. Uh, the the version that Horizon sent me was a uh, you know a basically take it out of the box, put a few screws in it, and I did that very swiftly. <laughs> and uh, the battery that they sent with it is one of their uh, 4,000 milliamp hour three cell packs. Uh, it's a smart battery, so. It's supposed to do all sorts of really fun things that I think is really cool, but I don't really have a smart battery charger. It did include one, but it's USB powered and it would have literally taken forever <laughs> uh, to charge. So uh, not to say that you couldn't charge with that battery, but um, I, I like my airplanes to charge a little bit faster. <laughs> Um, but that's, that being said, uh, the change to the XT60 allowed me to continue to use the smart connector that's on the supplied battery, but also allowed me to purchase a new 4000 milliamp hour 4 cell. And it, it's honestly the same dimensions. This is the HRB battery. I got this off of Amazon. I forget the cost, uh, but it was, it was very reasonable. Same dimensions as the... Uh, recommended four cell lipo that horizon gives you an option for so i thought you know i'll just buy it and see how it works it works great so so the number of screws to put this together is not that many there are eight in the nose gear the whole nose gear comes as an assembly there are eight screws there there's four to hold the wings together there's no wires, it's just a plug that as you mate the wing to the fuselage, they install perfectly. There are uh, three in the horizontal tail. I think three, no, uh, two, two in the horizontal tail. And then three more for the vertical tail. Not that many screws. Um, but what's important to note is that after I had flown this a couple of times, the airplane started doing some really erratic stuff where I was flying and the airplane would just all of a sudden balloon on me and I could not figure out why. Gave the Horizon guys a quick call and they said, oh, check, check your servo connections on the tail. I took apart the tail and took out the servo connections, put them in, made sure they were very secure, have not had any issues since. So it was clearly something with that. Make sure you take the time to really make sure that those servos are plugged in well. Other than that, this airplane, as demonstrated by <laughs> the uh, first flight video here, uh, I, I, I flew the airplane a little bit too fast on landing. So 
that's the safe. Did the battery come with it? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Alright. Let's see what happens. Is that supposed to be a touch and go? No. <laughs> Very springy landing gear. <laughs> So other than that, one of the really fun things I've been able to do with this airplane is pass the transmitter. Um, it, it's such a dead, reliable, steady airplane that it will do pretty much anything you ask it to. Um, the different modes are interesting uh, from an experienced pilot perspective. Not exactly my favorite kind of thing, uh, but it does work. And I can see how it would help beginning pilots and how this really can be considered a trainer. This airplane is so steady and it is so easy to fly slow. Slow flight is just amazing on this airplane. Uh, what's even more amazing is the, uh, the correction button on the transmitter. You hit the button as you're flying in any attitude, any attitude, it will level itself out. And I've done this just for giggles at the field, and the guys just laugh and laugh and laugh. It's, it's so funny to watch, and it's fun to play with, too, because you're just like, oh, how's it going to respond? Because, you know, some attitudes, it just pushes the tail forward and levels out. Some of it, you know, you put it in a really weird kind of angle. How's it going to go? How's it going to correct? So it's interesting to see how that technology corrects. So my plans with this model are uh, a little back burner right now. So I'm going to continue to enjoy it as it is. Um, but I, I, th I think this is a prime candidate for learning how to do some painting techniques. Um, there's some airbrush techniques that I've been wanting to play around with. And I think this is a good opportunity to sort of use this as an experimental base. I'm not too concerned about it. It's not a scale airplane anyway. It's just something to throw around and have fun with at the field. So why not use it as a learning experience? So that's to come as I go through my winter project. Uh, you know, as inevitable as it may be, you get burnout during big projects. And I'm planning for small little things to do when that happens, not if it happens. So look forward to that. And until next time, continue to have fun with lots of different types of flying works of art.